We are joined with uh, joined by Bofill Berry, who is mm-hmm. also known as Bofill Berry Fisher. <laughs> That's uh, right, my married name. Omaha-based playwright, and uh, you are back at the Blue Barn mm-hmm. with a show mm-hmm. or part of a show. That's right. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Bo had a great success at the Blue Barn Theater in 2019 yep. with Red Summer. Um, sold out many performances, and uh, they had to extend the show. <laughs> it's true. Um, <laughs> it's making me giggle because I'm like, well, yeah, that is what happened. <laughs> yeah. So now you're at the Blue Barn with a, uh, a portion, a glimpse, an excerpt mm-hmm. from a, an original black cowgirl musical called Buffalo Women. That's right. Uh, What was the inspiration for this? Um, It actually happened during Red Summer. My dramaturg on that show came in with a book she was using to research people of that time, um, that post-war, pre-Jim Crow era. And I saw the cover of that book, and it was a picture of Stagecoach Mary, and I was like, that is next. I'm going to do a musical about that person and I ended up reading the book and then and then getting many more pieces of research from black women in the wild west on the frontier at that time and I was just overwhelmed by all of these stories that I had not heard and I'm a huge history buff I'm always taking in um, especially pieces of black history trying to learn as much as I can and in all of my research I had never heard of these women And I was really excited to get behind them and share their stories, support their stories, and um, do it musically. Yeah. Um, So musically, Mm -hmm. uh, you have a collaborator. Uh, Can you talk about him? Jay Isaiah Smith is my musical partner on the show. Um, I've written books and lyrics, and Jay has written some beautifully inspired music. Uh, we've been together mostly over Zoom because this all happened during uh, COVID. Um, And he has just been, I mean, we work really well together and where he takes my ideas, you know, I'm not a musical person. So I come in and I'm like, I hear this, and he turns it into this sweeping score of my dreams. And when my time came, I sold two horses and I changed my name, rode off in the sunset and a soldier I became. And um, it's been really great working with him. And how did you come together? Have you worked before together? We hadn't. You know, um, I was just, I wanted to write a musical for so long, but not playing any instruments and things like that. There's always a barrier there. And so I put out a call, and everybody was like, you got to meet Jay Isaiah. He, he just jumped right in, and he's even put some of his own stuff aside so that we could finish this project together. So it's been really great. So Noe's got a chance to uh, uh, see a little uh, a rehearsal of, mm-hmm. of this piece, Buffalo Women. And we were introduced to characters named Bethula and Zadie and Cathay. Yes. And I'm sure there are other uh, characters as well. Yeah. Um, and were, were each of these women inspired by a specific woman in history, or are they all like uh, amalgams of, of several women? Or So Bethula is our protagonist, and she is... Uh, a conglomeration of many different women. Hers, her story is a story of motherhood and revenge and love. And so I took a little bit from other women that I read about and I made Bethula out of that. The same with Zadie. Um, we needed that character who mirrors Bethula, who plays the daughterly role. You ain't got a horse, mister? My horse was killed in action. It ain't safe out here, sir, even for a soldier. You still a Negro. Indeed. Cathay Williams was a real woman who really did uh, pretend to be a man in the Buffalo Soldier Union Army. We many miles out from the next town, so the more I press on, the sooner I can get to the other side of the Mason Dixon. Um, so getting to tell her story has been really fun. And then there are, there's, so this performance is. Um, a smaller cast, smaller set, smaller scale than a real production or than the script will be. So in the future, we'll be meeting Stagecoach Mary and Biddy Mason and maybe some bad guys, too. 
Great. And just uh, a little bit about there's some really powerful themes, of course, mm -hmm. bound up in this in this piece. Right. Um, I mean, themes of emancipation and uh, self-determination, mm -hmm. self-actualization, mm -hmm. um, lots of stuff going on here. Can you just uh, address a little bit of that without yeah. giving away too much? Um, well, the themes are really important to me. Um, because I want the themes from 1865 to also mirror the themes from today. So we talk about maternal mortality rates then and now, especially amongst black women. We talk about liberation, what that looks like, not only socially, but from your own inner shackles. Um, we talk about themes of my favorite theme in the show is revenge. I love it. I finally get to play out all all of my dastardly ideas, um, motherhood, forgiveness, um, friendship, not having to be strong when you can be soft also. Um, it's a lot, it is, there are a lot of themes that play out, but I think they're themes that people will really relate to. And this, uh, glimpse of Buffalo Women at the Blue Barn as part of their bonfire series? Yes, so this will show, we're calling this the elevated staged reading um, because we are behind scripts and there'll be some starting and stopping so that I can explain um, how the show came to be. It's really like a look behind the playwright's vision of what the show will be. It's a workshop. And this will be shown for two weekends, the 18th through the 20th and the 25th through the 27th as well as um, a virtual performance that will be available online for days or weeks after the show run is over. When everybody sings, it's a great divide when you're 